We're going to uh, start off with talking about potential August balance sheets. Why is August important? The August crop report incorporates the first time NAS, the ag statistics folks, go out, they go into the fields, they talk to farmers, they get a production estimate based on reality. To this point, they've been using statistical models that are, uh, you know, based on weather, planting date, temperature, but uh, this is going to be the one that has the boots on the ground actually looking at the crop. Just for recap, I put in here the, from the July report, you guys, I know you're familiar with the story, corn uh, planted 6.15 million more acres than last year. That surprised the market. They weren't expecting that big of an increase. Where, did the, where were the most, uh, or what state had the largest increase in corn acres? Was it Iowa or was it Illinois? Well, I know you're not talkative. No, it's not. It was the powerhouse of North Dakota and the powerhouse of Kansas, which are great wheat states coming along with corn, not the yield potential of an Iowa and Illinois. Uh, so we're looking at, uh, the point is that while some of the heart of the Corn Belt has had pretty good weather, we might cap the potential of having a record yield this year just because the acreage expansion has, a, has occurred outside of the core Corn Belt producing region. But uh, if you look at what they're thinking with the yield of 168 bushels, you're looking at a 14.5 billion bushel crop, total supply of 16.3 billion bushels. Use is not going to keep pace with that. You know that. Uh, feed and residual, 5.5 uh, billion. Ethanol, 5.2. 275 exports. Now, how many of you have enjoyed that rally that occurred in corn from April to June? Pretty good stuff, right? Right. That was exports. That was South American weather. They, you know, I told you all January and February, pray for problems with weather in South America. You're at work, right? So with total use, 14.2 billion, 14.2 billion bushels. Ending stocks over 2 billion bushels. That's getting to about 15% stocks use, farm price $3.40. Now I put in here three different projections. We'll start off with my trend. This is the weather models uh, and the feel good measures from Ag Statistics, the percent good excellence. Historically, it would project a yield of about 170 bushels an acre, a little bit ahead of the July report. So that would give you a, a 14.7 billion bushel crop keeping all the other use um, options the same, use uh, projections the same, we're going to see a blooming amount of stocks to 2.6 billion uh, and that would drop an average farm price. I have about six statistical models. Average of those about $3.17. Raging 265, 368. All right, so right, we got plenty of corn. And if we have an, a record yield, we're going to have even more stocks. I put up this far right column, minus 15 bushels an acre, not because I don't think it's going to happen. I just want to show how much slack we have in the stocks number and what sort of production issue we would need to get a bump in corn price. <clears throat> so if we get a national yield of 155 bushels, that would be a 13.4 billion bushel crop, keeping everything else the same. We could drop stocks use down to 10%. How likely is a massive weather event at this stage of the game for corn? Not very likely. So the point being, uh, the August report might fiddle a little bit here on the production numbers, but I wouldn't expect the uh, bottom line projections to vary drastically from where they are right now. Now I promised a somewhat optimistic talk and here is where it occurs, is beans, right? You could thank soybeans for carrying along corn too, right? Our, the problem in Argentina with flooding, that added some late season exports to 1.92 billion bushels. Currently they're projecting a uh, average yield of 46.7, right? So we have about a 1 million more planted acres for beans than last year. Where was the state that grew acres the most? Was it Iowa? No, Missouri. Why? Because last year they were pretty much alike. So just like corn, 
We have a million more acres, but they're not necessarily in the most productive soybean producing states. All right, so my uh, looking at the crop condition index, uh, it projects maybe a trend yield of 47 bushels an acre, slightly above where NAS and USDA is uh, in their July report. So if we come in, you would expect um, at 47 bushels, you have a 3.9 billion bushel crop, very strong use, very strong use. That could drop stocks to about 250 million bushels and we'd have 975 US farm price. Where does the optimistic story come in? What if we get a US yield of 45 bushels an acre? Now, there's a, you know, they say the bean crops made in August. There could be time for mother nature to whittle away at that. That would be a 3.7 billion bushel crop. Hang on to your hat, 85 million bushels ending stocks. Or if you don't like the raw numbers, a 2% stocks use. Now, that would never ever happen, right? The minimum pipeline estimates 4%, all right? So something would have to give. You might have to have less crushing or less exports. But how does the market keep, it, keep uh, stocks from dropping to 2%? What's the mechanism? Price, right? This isn't China. We don't have a totalitarian government. Price. So assuming here under my crazy world of a 2% stocks use, that's a US farm price of 1170. If price has to ration, where would it go relative to 1170? Up. Up. So I know you all are optimistic folks by nature and you always like high yields, but there's a case to be made that if you come in a little bit below trend on beans, that would be positive. So trying to look at price potential in the cash market for October. We know there's some seasonality in prices and I see Ed McQueen here in the audience. Uh, he shared with me some of the cash data that he collects for the Farm Bureau. So I want to get a plug in to the, to the kind folks at Kentucky Farm Bureau for sharing this information with me. What this is, is the blue line is average Western Kentucky October cash for contracts, uh, April through July, um, partial date. This is as of July 22nd, right? Monthly average. So for corn, for cat, your four contracting opportunities maxed out in June. If you didn't do anything, you've been alarmed or disappointed. I have four different price paths. The black line is to the average over the 15 years worth of data, the monthly change, right? What, and this makes sense, right? What does the corn market tend to do from July to harvest? Slide, right? The crop's made, there's no risk of actually killing it. Any price premium gets removed. If it follows the normal path, that would be an average of about 330 a bushel. Uh, then we took plus one or minus, plus a standard deviation of those 15 years and minus a standard deviation. Just to give you a spread that would capture maybe two thirds of the price pass. If things get really bearish, really, really, really bearish, that would imply a 235 cash price. If some, you know, miracle happens, low probability event, 444. What might be more interesting um, then the spread is a comparable year. I looked for a year where we had the growth in any stocks similar to what's projected for the 2016 marketing year. There were two years, 2008 and 2013. What was special about 2008? What happened to your, if you had any money in the stock market, what happened in 2008? Collapsed. It collapsed and it took the futures market with it. So I tossed that one out. So this comparable year is really 2013. And that would, get, that would imply an October cash price of about $3 a bushel. All right, so I'm back in my pessimistic mode. Now, same story for beans, right? You could tell we're in the market uh, tuned into Argentina's soybean production problems. That's when late March, early April, the maximum ca uh, cash forward contract in June was 11.09 to um, last Friday, the average for July is 10.46. If it follows the average price path, 
the implied price is 988. And then the comparable years would be 863. Now, again, this ain't sounding all that optimistic. I, I hear you, right? But how much cushions uh, in the soybean market, ending stocks, if there's a production problem? Remember that balance sheet? A two bushel national yield loss, we're about out of soybeans. So the answer is darn little cushion. That's where you have the upside potential. Now if you're, like I'm an economist, I tend to look at averages and I worry about downside risk. But if you're thinking and as you pay attention to the August report, the yield adjustments for beans isn't that great, but as you pay attention to the weather, and as harvest, if it looks like the bean crop's not as big as, as expected, then you might have some expectations of prices increasing above that 988 path. So, crops, the U.S. crops seem to be in good condition. While you might have some regional problems overall, the core states are, are doing fairly well. The thing we're in is a weather market, and weather markets are hard to follow when it's your own country. But we're in a world where we got to watch for a weather market in South America, right? When do South Americans start harvesting corn? Well, Brazil starts uh, in January. And then February for beans, Argentina, March, April, May for beans and corn. So if they have good weather and they have big crops, they're back in the export market pretty darn soon, right? So we talk about marketing year. Maybe you might want to be thinking of marketing half year because depending on the weather in South America, your opportunities could be fleeting. And so that affects your potential returns to storage, right? If, you're, if your marketing plan is to put it in a bin and sit on it, uh, that's fine. Know your costs and pay attention to pr uh, potential prices because you may not benefit from that uh, rally we had in beans and corn late spring um, this, this last year as you would for the 2016 crop into 2017.